unable. You're not able to do anything. All right. So uh, to them. Okay, that's an exaggeration. Okay, he has to exaggerate to prove his point because um, he's saying that we can't do anything good. Listen to me. I'm doing some good right now by exposing him. Don't tell me I'm in, I'm unable to do good. You know, I'm doing good right now by preaching, by reading the word. You know, by exposing him. So don't tell me that. He's already twisted that doctrine. He's already exaggerated it. Okay, here he is again, folks. Keep on. Jesus is totally different. Jesus is not uh, a savior from sin. Jesus is not a. Uh, Jesus did not come to destroy the works of the devil to set people free. Instead, Jesus came simply just to cover sin. He came to make an atonement, they believe, that simply covers them. All right. Okay, listen to me. He's already mistaken because he's saying that we think that that's, that's all Jesus did was he came to, co to cover our sins. He, yes, in fact, he did come to cover our sins, and I'm going to show you with the scripture. But you know what? There's a lot more to it than that. He came to give us eternal life. He came to, uh, to, to make us spiritually alive. He came to, uh, to give us d direction, to give us hope, to give us peace, to give us joy. Uh, he came to, to, to set an example. He's our Christus Victor as well as our Christus, Christus Exemplar. He came to do a lot. He's just what this dude's doing is he's trying to he's putting accusations on those who who, who believe the truth and he, they're, they're they're straw man accusations. I believe Jesus does cover all your sins and I'm going to show you in the scripture right now. Let me I'm going to do away with this nonsense and then I'm going to show you what the scripture says about having all our sins covered. Let me put this up uh, these headphone this microphone back on. Hang on. Okay. Okay, he's saying that, um, what he's saying is, um, Jesus did not come to cover our sins. And I've, I'm going to find as many scriptures as I can on this, so let, let me pause this, hang on. Now, you're probably wondering why I have to, I feel the need to expose this guy. For one, he's, uh, he's just not, he's, t he's denying what the Bible teaches. Turn to, uh, Psalm, turn to the book of Psalms, 32, uh, verse 1. And it gives me a lot of pleasure to be able to expose this kind of stuff. It says right here, um, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. There you have it. The Bible says our sins are covered. Now I'm going to explain to you what that word means, covered. You know? I mean, I guess you could, he, he's, twisting it, he's twisting the meaning, obviously, because uh, he doesn't, he doesn't want to believe it, because he has no truth in him. Okay? This guy's of the devil. And I'm, I'm being straight. Okay, um, now turn to... Um, the covering is pretty much analog analogous to uh, having your sins cleansed. Now, Scripture is clear on that as well. Your sins are washed away by the blood of Christ. You know, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as, as white as snow. Though they, be, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Okay? Psalm um, 51, verses uh, 1 and 2. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Okay? For I acknowledge my, transgress my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Why on earth would David, the psalmist, ask God to cleanse him from all his sin if, it, if it, God wouldn't do it? It doesn't even make any sense. That's like saying, dear God, please uh, make it rain bricks. It doesn't make any sense, you know. It's not going to rain bricks. It's not possible for it to rain bricks. So why ask God for it to rain bricks? Why would David ask God to, to cleanse him from all his sins? Blot out all his transgressions if God doesn't if God wouldn't do that. But God does do that. Now turn to uh, Psalm eighty five. This guy is nuts. He thinks he, he thinks he's on his way to heaven, folks. If it, he's not. He's not on his way to heaven. If he was at one point saved by the true uh, simple message of the gospel, faith alone in Christ, then he is on his way to heaven. But I don't there's no way. There's no way a person like, like this could have gotten this far. At having, having at one point trusted in Christ. I don't understand it. Well, there may, there, there's a chance he is on his way to heaven, but I think it's a very small chance. You know, he, he, if he would have came to Christ, I think he uh, thought he came to Christ, and then, but, but because, but he's proving that he hasn't come to Christ because he's just teaching works. Uh, let's see. Psalm 85. Now, I, I, I don't want to make, I don't want to make this sermon, I know I, I entitled the sermon, Christopher Hill is straight from hell. I don't want to make this, this entire sermon, you know, you know, try to you know, like a game, trying to figure out if he's sa if he's saved or not. I'm just telling you what he's doing is wrong, and it's of the devil. Okay, so we're not going to go into whether he's saved or not. But uh, you know, but right now, I, according to what he's saying, he's not trusting in Christ at all. Okay, Psalm 85, um, 
verse 2, says this, Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. You see the word all there? Okay, key word, all. Thou hast covered all their sin. You know, he's suggesting that you get your past, I don't even know if he's suggesting this. He, he's, I mean, I, the, most people like this are suggesting that you get your past sins covered, but your present and future sins um, are not covered. So what do you do about them? So in his case, you stop sinning. That's it. You stop sinning. You never know when you're saved because you never know when, when you've stopped. You know, Scripture says we have sins that we do in ignorance we don't even know about. You know, Scripture says that sin can deceive you, Romans 7.11. How do you know if you've stopped all those sins if, if, you, if, you're, if you're ignorant about them? It doesn't make any sense, folks. Now, I'm going to check this the Greek word covered here. And let me tell you, let me, let's, take, look at, let's look at the Greek here. Okay, the word cover, in the, it's actually in Hebrew, because this is in the Old Testament. The word, word, cover, it, the word covered in Hebrew is kasa. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a primitive root. It, it literally means um, to, to clothe, to cover, to conceal, to hide, to overwhelm. In other words, when you got your sins covered, it's like they're, they're hidden, they're gone. They've been washed away, you know, you, you know. It's like you've been put on a new, new, a new form of righteousness, which is Christ's imputed righteousness. That's what happens. Okay. Now let's listen. Let me let me pause this and listen to Christopher Hill. I'm going to find him denying Christ, and I want you to hear it. Okay, because I want you to know that this guy denies Christ. Okay, he denies that salvation is a free gift. I don't care how much he says it's a gift or how much he says that we're saved by grace. He's going to change grace. He's going to change you know the freeness of salvation, and I need to expose him right here and right now. Okay. He's that's the other Jesus, you know, Jesus Jones, the guy who sings right, right here, right now. That's the false Jesus. He's <laughs> he's worshiping. Well, no, it's not really. But my point is, he's not worshiping the Jesus that's found in this book here, the Bible. All right, let me pause it and we'll, we'll be back. <clears throat> I might even I might even play that song for you because that's when you get salvation, right here, right now. <laughs> okay, let me, let me find that song and I'm gonna play it for you because it, it's germane to the sermon. You get salvation right here, right now. The moment you ask for it, you got it. Okay. Let me pause. Well, here's a verse that describes Christopher Hill right here in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians um, chapter 4, verse 4. We we'll actually start with verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine, upon, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Okay, now listen to this. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He doesn't believe the gospel. Christopher Hero doesn't believe the gospel of that, uh, that salvation is by faith alone in Christ. That's why he's preaching works, because he doesn't believe the gospel. It's hidden, it's hidden from him by the God of this world. Lowercase g, little g, that's Satan. Okay? But now, hang on, let me find, hang on one second. I've got this song entitled "Right Here, Right Now." This is kind of amazing how all this is just coming together. You know, we've got a false, we've got a false teacher, a heretic, who's preaching that nobody knows when they can be saved because you got to stop your sins, and nobody knows. See, there's no salvation there. Now we've got a false Jesus. Well, I'm not saying this guy. This guy's name is Jesus. His name is Jesus Jones. You know, he's he's not. I'm not saying this. I don't know if this guy's saved or not. I don't know Jesus Jones. I don't know anything about him. All I know is he he sings a song entitled "Right Here, Right Now." Okay? In other words, if you're believing in a Jesus that does not save, which Christopher Hill believes, he's trying to save himself, then you're believing in a false Jesus. But now, listen to me. G Jesus Jones wrote the song right here, right now, and that's when you get salvation. Okay? You get it right here, right now, the moment you ask for it. For, whos for, whoso for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You get it the moment you call. And I've got a verse to back it up before I play you the song. It's kind of like just a little you know, interlude. Let me give you the verse that salvation comes right now in an instant. Okay, we then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Okay, that's what he's teaching, the grace of, the grace of God in vain. If you're trying to work for your salvation, grace is in vain. Okay, but now get this. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Okay, because salvation comes in a picosecond, you can actually say, now is the picosecond of salvation. Once you got, once you're saved, you're always saved. This guy denies it. But now, let's hear, let's hear the song. I want you to hear it right here. Salvation comes right here, right now. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus Jones can offer you salvation. But I'm telling you right now, this song tells you how salvation that's offered in the Bible, 
from the real Jesus Christ, the, the Christ that Jesus Christ that offers 